my first instrument was uh, alto saxophone at age 12. I started uh, in, well, what was then known as junior high school, but now known as middle school. Um, I originally wanted to be a drummer. I, I loved the drums as a kid, but uh, when I first saw uh, Cannonball Adderley and Eddie Harris and Ross on Roland Kirk live as a kid, that's really what lit the fire for the saxophone. Wow, it's been a lot. Um, well, formal education uh, all through uh, school, uh, junior high school, high school, uh, college. Uh, and during that whole time, I was also playing with friends and older musicians. Uh, so during my teen years, uh, while I'd be playing in school and in a symphonic wind band and jazz band and marching band, uh, we'd have our garage bands uh, during the week or weekends. We'd rehearse during the week and play on weekends. Uh, at school dances and Elks Lodges and things like that, playing a lot of the R&B hits of the 70s. Um, and then later on in my teen years when I started playing jazz, uh, I got to play with a lot of older musicians. And uh, went on the road a bit uh, doing some R&B and funk. And a couple of guys in that band, uh, the guitarists and the bassists, were actually a jazz duo in the off time. So that's why I started to learn tunes. They started teaching me about tunes and playing chord changes. And... Uh, then I went to uh, went to college in 1980, in the early 80s, and um, uh, at uh, Virginia Commonwealth University in Richmond. And the gentleman who ran the program there at the time, uh, Doug Richards, was really steeped in the uh, early traditions of jazz. Jelly Roll Morton, early Duke Ellington, Fletcher Henderson, um, Count Basie, and that's where I really got introduced to uh, the foundation of the music. And we got to play a lot of those charts and. He brought in people like Benny Carter, Elvin Jones, Jackie Byard, Frank Foster, the Heath Brothers. Um, so we really got exposed to a lot of the great masters. Um, and that was like a very invaluable uh, experience because it, it really steeped me in a tradition and, uh, and really inspired me to, to be in this music and to, to know its rich history and legacy. So uh, he's one of my great mentors. <laughs> my first paying gig, um, I don't remember it exactly, but I was probably 14, uh, or 13 or 14, and this is in one of the uh, garage bands that we had um, in our neighborhood. And I was lucky because growing up uh, where I did in Hampton, Virginia, all the kids in my neighborhood uh, did two things, played music and sports. So every kid played an instrument and uh or and or played sports and, and we formed these bands um just for the love of playing we never thought about being professionals at that time we just loved playing and of course the r&b world r&b funk world was full of great bands at that time especially the horn bands so we loved emulating those bands so probably around 13 or 14 we played at one of the school dances and i think we we're very happy to get the 10 or 15 bucks a piece that, <laughs> that we got at that time that was a lot of money in those days <laughs> You know, that, that uh, bought a lot of McDonald's hamburgers in those days, so <laughs> we were thrilled to get it. Um, but I think my first paying jazz gig uh, was around 17 or 18 years old, and uh, playing in a big band uh, at the, um, the Greenbrier in White Sulphur Springs, West Virginia. And uh, I got called to play in a big band there, and uh, we did one of those dances, and I thought, hey, this could be pretty good. I could play some great music and make money at it, so, yeah. What's that? <laughs> Thank you. 